Maldito sal Is Hey guys, thanks for letting me be a part of your small group this week. Continuing our series Awesome Mix, where we're looking at music and the role that music plays in the life of Jesus followers. And it's interesting, music, if you look at scripture, music's kind of woven all throughout it. You have different individuals, we kind of hear their story, but they just break out into song at times. You have Moses who kind of breaks out into song. David, he's a songwriter. He's actually really good with an instrument and he's also a warrior king. He's kind of like the triple threat, right? And music's a big part of his life. He writes a lot of the Psalms, which is a huge chunk of our Bible. That's just songs that, that are written down. And the reason these songs are there, because it helps us connect with emotion and theology. What what we know about God and, and our relationship with Him and, and this music, this poetry, it, it connects us in ways that words alone can't, can't connect us. It, it paints pictures, vivid images, and there's tunes to all of this that, that allow us to remember it. And there's ways that we can retain this information through music in ways that just teaching, we, we can't. And, and as you continue to look through scripture, you see Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, she breaks out into song. Jesus sings with his disciples. And all throughout the Bible, you see this constant theme of music. In fact, God teaches us in the Old Testament, when we are to approach this place where God's presence dwelled in the Old Testament, and the people would go in there, they, they would enter in with, with singing. And, and that singing, they would sing from the Psalms, and they would sing these songs about who God is and His grace and, and His love for us. And part of music, it's to remind us of the reality of who we are and the reality of, of who God is. And so we're not just singing songs because it sounds cool or because it's great music. Uh, there's truth woven throughout these songs that we sing. When you come to church on a weekend, uh, the songs that we're singing, it's not just, man, that's a really cool beat. And wow, that really, the, you know, the harmonizing between those vocalists was phenomenal. No, there, there's truth woven all throughout that. And music allows it to penetrate in a way that, that words alone can't. This week, we're looking at a song that has endured the last few hundred years. It's a song called It Is Well. And even in modern times, there's been some new renditions of this song recently. Uh, but this song has a story behind it that, that I want to just briefly share with you. There was this wealthy businessman, a lawyer, back in the 1800s in Chicago. And he had done really well financially, owned lots of property. And around that time, he was starting to build a family. He and his wife, they had five kids. They had four daughters and a son. And his son became ill. They, they tried treating it. They weren't able to, to save their son. Their son ended up passing away, just absolute tragedy. And a year later, there was this great fire in Chicago and the great Chicago fire burned up a lot of this land. Well, that's where this guy's properties were. And so Horatio Spafford was his name. All of his business overnight burned down. All of his investments financially, they, they were destroyed. And as they were kind of wrestling with this just really dark time in their life, they said, you know what? We need to just get away. So we're going to go to this revival. There's this guy named D.L. Moody uh, who's going to be speaking at it, a Christian minister at the time, an evangelist. And hey, let's go to this revival and just kind of uh, reconnect with God in this dark and, and sad time. So uh, they were about to head out and he said, hey, I got a business thing I need to take care of. So he sent his wife and his four daughters on this boat ahead of him. And so he would just follow up in a couple days. And as this boat was crossing the Atlantic, headed towards England where this revival, this Christian gathering was taking place, uh, the boat was struck by another boat. And as that boat sank, all four of his daughters drowned in this crisis. Only his wife survived clinging uh, to some debris and a fisherman came by, was able to rescue her. And she telegraphed over to her husband, saved alone. And in this moment, this guy who had lost his son, this guy who had lost his business, his wealth. Now he lost his four daughters and it was just he and his wife. And so he gets on a boat and heads out towards England. And as he's going, the captain pulls him aside and says, hey, this spot that we're crossing over on the water right now, uh, this is the spot uh, where your daughters drown. I just wanted to let you know, and if you need a moment and 
Horatio in that moment, he, he looks at the captain and he, he says, my daughters aren't, aren't here. Uh, my daughters are with Jesus. He understood the big picture that even in the midst of all of this trial and this chaos and death and sorrow and just heartbreak and the insecurity of all of these things, he says, no, 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 my hope, it's not in this life. My, my hope is in Jesus and the new life that, that he's offered us. See, his daughters had given their lives to Jesus. They had put their faith in Jesus. And so he was confident that even in the midst of this tragedy, uh, that God could be worshiped uh, because God had an answer to this huge problem going on in his life. And so then he pens these words that have endured time. And these words are, it is well with my soul. A song that talks about even when sorrow comes in, even when things are as bad as bad can be, even when my circumstances aren't great, it is still well with my soul. And the reason is because we have a God who hasn't abandoned us, but who's provided a solution to our greatest problems, who's provided a way out through faith in Jesus. And so I don't know what kind of things you've gone through in your life, and uh, I don't know what kind of dark times you've had, and my guess is there's parts of this story that you can relate to and parts that you go, man, that... That is just terrible what happened to this guy. But we've all had ups. We've all had downs. Have you ever had a time in your life where things maybe were a little bit down, yet you were able to still say it is well with my soul? Can you think of a moment where maybe your circumstances weren't all that great, yet there was a peace that you had? Or maybe you could think of the opposite. You can think of a time that circumstances, man, things are going great. Things are, you know, from the outside looking in, everything seems to be going okay. But, but at a soul level, something was off. Something, something was, was wrong. And so it's going to be a little more vulnerable. But uh, as a group, would you just talk about, has there ever been a time that maybe you, your circumstances have been low, but your soul has been well? Or vice versa, where circumstances have been great, uh, but there's something just not at peace within your soul. So... Go ahead and I'll hand it off to you guys for the conversation and, and let's see what God does through this time.